Hey guys, it's Rachel from The Little Green Lamb, and before I get into this review, I hope the lighting is fine, and it was reflecting really weirdly off this sweater. I changed already once because I was wearing a school sweater into this. I don't know why, because this film sometimes can come up really weirdly on the colors, so hope it's okay. But anyway, getting into the video, this book review will be on The Best of Adam Sharp by Graham Seamsian. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, if not, please feel free to correct me, and I'll try to um, not correct that in editing, but correct that next time I do say that. Anyway, this book review will be spoiler free, and if you haven't seen one of my book reviews or you just need a refresher, I read my book, book reviews in five different categories, plot, characters, cover, suspense, and overall in terms of reading again very soon, five out of five, not so soon, one out of five. So if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my notebook where I have um, all my scores. This book I was super excited to read. It's been one of the ones that as soon as I saw the author announce it on Twitter, I really wanted to read it right away and it wasn't only it's not out in Canada right now so I had to order it from Book Depository and I, I just couldn't wait I just wanted to read it because I know every like it came out in September I think in Australia so like it came out a while ago for other people but I'm like I really need to read this like I've been waiting so long yeah well it's not really that long in all retrospect but it just feels like a really long time and I really love this author's work um, because I've read The Rosie Project and The Rosie Effect um, so basically The Best of Adam Sharp is about a man named Adam Sharp, and this book goes from his past to his present, all chronicling his relationship with a girl named Angelina. So for the synopsis, I'm just going to read um, these few little paragraphs because it's very short. On the cusp of 50 and a happy introvert, Adam is perfectly content. He's a music expert at his local pub quiz, and he and his partner Claire rumble along. Life may not be all rock and roll, but neither is it easy listening, yet something has always felt off-key. And that's his nostalgia for what might have been, his blazing affair more than 20 years ago, on the other side of the world of Angelina Brown, a smart and sexy strong-willed actress who taught him for the first time what it meant to find and then lose love. How different might his life be if he hadn't let her walk away? Then out of nowhere Angelina gets in touch, Adam has sung about second chances but does he have the courage to believe in them. So this book, I was really interested in reading it, not only for that aspect but it just sounds like a really good story and it was. Um, the plot I gave a 4.5 out of 5. Now the reason I didn't get the whole five is because at the beginning it took me a little while to get into it and then at the ending I felt like it didn't drag on but I just felt like it was a little slow at the ending but that might have just been because I was reading it late at night so I didn't want to give it that much off for the ending part because that could have just been me but for the most part the positives way outweighed the negatives. This book was really good. It really for me got its stride after page around 40-50. Um, I started to get into it more and that like that is also common for books but besides that I went really fast and I was really enjoying it and trying to read this as much as possible on Monday alone like because I had um, quite a bit of commuting back and forth and then waiting um, for classes to start I read 170 pages in a day and that's quite a bit for me especially because I had seven hours of school that day um, which doesn't happen very often but I just absolutely adored this book I loved everything that happened in the plot yes there's some things in the plot where I was like a little weirded out a bit but I thought it was interesting and move forward also I forgot to mention this in the beginning but if you're a younger watcher um, this book is probably not appropriate for you it is general fiction it's not YA and there I don't think I don't remember if there's any like a lot of cussing but there is sexually explicit scenes so just keep that in mind if you are a younger watcher because I don't want you going into this book thinking it's like YA because it does have kind of like not a YA looking cover but I could see how it could be mistaken um, for that um, because you know covers you know they can cross translate and it's like a really like fun cover so just thought I'd put that out there um, but yes 4.5 I really liked how progressed I just really like how fast his books move um, like besides you know the beginning you know that but I really liked how fast it moved it was at a good pace um, it was just really interesting and I really liked the back and forth at first it kind of threw me for a loop but I really liked hearing about him and Angelina back you know in the 1970s or 80s I think it was the 70s if I'm not mistaken or late 70s I think 80s no late 80s sorry I think it was late 80s yeah sorry I was getting confused there um but I really liked hearing about them back then and then what's happened to their lives because with books sometimes I want to know what's going to happen in the future and I really liked how we got a past and a future. I really just love that aspect of most um, literature because I don't like leaving characters when I don't know what's happening and I feel like when I know what's happening a bit more and I know like what's happened in the past, future, and present I feel like more content to leave the series, you know, even though if I don't want to but I feel like there's more of a closure. 
Um, characters I give a four out of five. I really liked the characters. I really like how self-aware the characters were, especially Adam. Um, Adam like did you know make some questionable decisions throughout the novel, but for the most part, I really love the self-aware aspect in characters. Like they know, it's the aspect that some characters don't know if they're doing right or wrong, and his characters, uh, like especially Adam, know if they're like doing something good and know if they're doing something bad, and they have the self-realization to say like this might not be a good decision morally maybe I should change that and I find in some books like the characters just don't think about that and I don't like I know some people probably don't think about that but like for me I find it hard that people wouldn't necessarily think of the consequences because I feel like I'm such a consequence finger I'm like if I do this will this happen like you know and he I really like more like calculated characters where they just don't like like they make impulsive decisions but then they can go back and reflect on them and sometimes in books like you don't get that which I really do enjoy. That's an aspect that this year, just reading in general, I've really enjoyed and I've been really looking out for. Um, I really loved the character of Adam Sharp. I really love how the music was intertwined. I did not know a lot of the music in this book because I really didn't, like my mom, I was really controlled of, not controlled of music, but like basically it was all my mom's music till I was about 10 years old, which was in 2005. So a lot of the older music I haven't really gone into. And I definitely want to check out the songs in this playlist. I just didn't do it while I was reading it because sometimes I was reading on my commute and I don't want to use that much data. Um, but basically, I really just love the songs in Tareved. Um, I really like the character of Angelina. Like, she did make some questionable things, but she was very interesting at the same time. Even Charlie and Claire, I really liked them too. Um, those ones I didn't feel as close to, like, especially Claire, but Charlie I did. And... I just really liked all the characters. There's a little bit something missing, but for the most part, I really like how the characters were written. I felt like they all had, you know, like they all made in this book questionable decisions and there was some like um, themes going on that I don't necessarily agree with, but they're, I guess, interesting to read on like a personal level. I'm trying not to spoil it, so if I'm dancing around stuff, we can discuss in the comments, but I just really just love the characters. Like I feel like I didn't super connect with them, but it wasn't a bad thing that I didn't. and. I really liked their how you get to hear their more like mental processes where it's like some books it's just like oh I did this but it's like oh I did this and like so was that necessarily a good or bad thing? This book review is going on really long so I'm going to try to speed it up a bit. Cover I give a 5 to 5. This cover I think is so pretty. I really like this one. This is the UK edition if I'm not mistaken. Um, the Canadian edition is really yellow and I like that one too but I like this one even better. I love how it's a record with like a heart in the middle and like broken. Um, and I really just love the hardback with the black and orange. I just really like orange. I've really been liking orange books lately this year. Like I have some orange books up here that I've been trying to organize together because I just really like that on books apparently. And that's a newfound love of mine. Um, suspense, I give a four to five because of the slow parts. But once I got into it, I was into it and I want to read as much as possible. And overall, I give rereadability a five to five. I'm definitely going to reread this book. This book moved, like once I got into it, moved fast and... I really did enjoy it and it's something I definitely go back to especially because it is a standalone it's easier for me to come back to and I just really like Graham Simpson's writing like it just flows really nicely um, and then I have a few notes that I have on my phone which I almost forgot to bring out so basically my favorite chapters are chapter 11 and chapter 13 um, those ones were recounting Adam's past and I just found them the love between Adam and Angelina was like just so simplistic and really beautifully written in those chapters and I really did appreciate it and my favorite section I think was on page 342 and I'm going to try to find the exact thing and see if I can actually read it aloud because I don't think it will spoil anything. So page 342 was my favorite like quote from the book and it's lost love belongs in a three minute song pulling back feelings from a time when they came unbidden recalling the infatuation the walking on sunshine that cannot last in the pain of its loss whether free parting or the passage of time reminding us that we are emotional beings. And I found that a really pretty quote. I'm definitely going to be putting a sticky tab there so I can remember that. There was a lot of really good quotes in this book, but that was one that especially stand out to me. And this has been my book review on The Best of Adam Sharp by Graham Simsian. Um, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you guys have read this, let's discuss in the comments. Remember to put spoilers if you're going to spoil anything and then space down a few so we don't spoil other people who haven't read the novel. And yeah, once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.